Thanks. And uh, first of all, I thank the Arunagam group uh, uh, to invite me for such an uh, August gathering. And I feel it's my paramount uh, responsibility to be a part of such activity. And uh, actually, uh, you know, I mean, uh, conservation is a is actually it's a very uh, challenging task. And uh, conservation of a wildlife, a forest, or or whatever natural resources is there. From, uh, we are facing a, a, a huge uh, challenges from different quarters. Uh, whether I, whether I should talk in Malayalam or English, what what, what is the what is the, uh, the English group? English, sir. Okay. English. I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. So so I, what I was just telling that uh, the conservation requires a lot, I mean lots of support from different uh, target groups, different uh, um, uh, stakeholders. It is not the responsibility of the government alone or the state government or state sector to just preserve you know, this particular our uh, rich biodiversity and uh, it, it's, it's the challenges are quite uh, big in uh, and and, uh, and a very uh, very large scale especially the population density is very high the development pressures are very much uh, there in terms of our roads uh, developments are there developments uh, in terms of our infrastructure is coming up so for for everything there is naturally uh, there is a pressure on the forest to give the land and uh, so forest department always uh, uh, in a some sort of a uh, what, what do you call in a back foot uh, to to balance it and uh, unless otherwise uh, i mean uh, the, the, i mean the support is from the different uh, strata of the society the conservation may not be achieved uh, it, forest department uh, at this outset i would like to again uh, put you across all the uh, my friends there forest department is a some sort of a, a department uh, where the role is uh, role is uh, like a goalkeeper in a in a match you know, in a football match i just want to put it across uh, well what i would have, what I put a, uh, why why i want to just compare a, the job of a goalkeeper in a in a in a team uh, it is something like the other departments like education department or health or maybe the development sector. They are actually the forward player. They are like our, what do you call, Maradona or Messi or Ronaldo. Uh, it is something like that. Uh, their projects are something, uh, if there were three, three or four projects not click, even one project click. They're like, for example, the Ronaldo is uh, st uh, striking at the goalpost so four times not going to the goal. But the fifth time, somehow he scores and Ronaldo becoming a hero. So it is something like that. And forest department job is something uh, related to our goalkeeper's job, where we are, we are asked to always say no to, to all the development projects. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that not all. I mean, many of the time you want the road development, we'll say, oh, this is difficult. If you, you want uh, for the land to be given to some sort of uh, industries, we say that is difficult. Uh, some other uh, uh, highway or some other projects is coming up. No, it is passing through our very vital uh, tiger reserve, so it's not possible. So, uh, and uh, in terms uh, in the local local uh, politicians or the uh, the uh, panchayats or the everybody will be uh, putting forest department in a very very tight position. That forest department is is always saying no. And we, we actually been branded as something like that, uh, a villain, a uh, villain in the whole thing. And I would again put across the comparison with the, in a, in a team where goalkeeper job is somehow is saving every time all these issues are there. We are keep on saving this uh, uh, forest by, by, by scoring against the, the, getting into the goal. The nine times we saved the forest by, I mean, I, I would say the nine times we saved the uh, goal. But tenth time, somehow we missed, or or um, we couldn't able to do that, and uh, forest department become a villain, like a goalkeeper is been blamed for that particular lose, losing the match. It is something like that. I want to uh, put across to all of my friends that forest department job in the present structure or present scenario of conservation is very very challenging, where we alone, our forest department, or forest staff, or something, may not able to achieve the uh, conservation by our own. Where the role of you all, gentlemen, all my friends are very much required. Everybody has to play a role for conserving our rich heritage. It's our, 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 uh, our property, our heritage, our resources, and everybody has a role to play. And, and I'm really glad that 
such organizations is coming up for celebrating the wildlife week the concept the spirit of the wildlife conservation is something like that where the uh, every society every members everyone should join together if for the for the cause of conservation cause of wildlife conservation cause of biodiversity conservation for our protect for the protection of our forest for our uh, saving our rich uh, uh, natural resources uh, saving our rivers saving our watersheds and uh, i mean oh, yeah so end of the day every target group matters a lot now come to i don't want to take much of the time i'll just come to the topic directly where my topic gives in ask the the concept of eco develop and wildlife conservation in care in kerala I, i would rather put in across the role of eco development and how it uh, matters in conservation wildlife conservation in kerala now uh, you all know that uh, kerala uh, being a flag bearer uh, in conservation for a long time back decades back uh, we know the the silent valley movement uh, we are the first uh, I mean, one of the very pioneer uh, Uh, state to uh, to st uh, to stop the green felling uh, we are uh, uh, we have uh, something around out of uh, uh, 38000 square kilometer plus of forest we have something 11500 square kilometer of forest area that will cover something around one third of the state's forest uh, for i mean geographical area with the forest out of the uh, the 11500 square kilometer Uh, and uh, if the if it put across the protected area where the national parks we have on six national parks we have on around um, 18 uh, wildlife sanctuaries uh, we have one community reserve this call under the protected area bracket uh, category and if you put across other categories in such we have two tiger reserve parmikon tiger reserve and periyar tiger reserve we have two biosphere reserve we nilgiri biosphere and agasvan and biosphere reserve we have four elephant uh, reserves uh, the overall the protected area will be forming something around uh, some 3500 square kilometer which will be again something around 29 percentage of the total forest area the uh, national forest policy or national uh, wildlife board recommends around one fourth of the total forest area should be under pa uh, pa bracket where kerala is yeah. far ahead in the online yeah. basala So, yeah, in the forest, uh, Kerala Forest Department is much uh, ahead in terms of conservation requirement, conservation values, etc. It's, it's a, it's a historically we are doing well. And eco development also is one of the area where for Kerala Forest Department is is has been done tremendous job uh, in uh, in this sector also. Uh, as my friend earlier told, eco development all this definition I'll just come across. So, so my presentation will be virtually will be revolving around eco development initiatives in Kerala, particularly the experiments what uh, we have done in Parambikulam and Periyar Tiger Reserve. So before we uh, getting into that uh, uh, basic definition, which I'm sure that some of my friends must be knowing, or most of the friends must be knowing, uh, the, under the Wildlife Protection Act, if the definition if we go through, the protected area actually the four uh, it includes uh, national parks. it includes wildlife sanctuaries community reserve and uh, and uh, conservation reserve now i don't want to uh, give a detailed definition about all those things but just for in my uh, information sharing with all of my friends there it, the, the basic difference between the, all those things are in, in national park everything is pro prohibited uh, in, uh, in uh, human activities prohibited entry is prohibited i mean the uh, no, i mean it, it is it's like sanctum sanctorum of a forest well legally it has been bound uh, nobody will be enter there nobody will except for the management uh, perspective point of view it's a, it's that area has been demarcated or been earmarked for a total pro, uh, protection with no intervention inside that particular area it's natural park area now uh, wildlife sanctuary is some uh, is, a, is though that part of a forest area or sanctuary or protected or, or uh, it has been notified in such a manner that the certain activities are are being permitted there uh, i would say some of the rights uh, has been uh, still there in national park all the rights of a people would have been settled in wildlife sanctuaries for example you have grazing grazing right will be there tribal uh, tribal population will be staying they may go for a collection of their mfps so all those small small rights will be still continuing in the wildlife sanctuaries now uh, earlier what happened the forest area what the forest department having those areas in the that will notified as a protected area either national park or wildlife sanctuary 
of late we realized that there are many area under the other line department is already having for example railways is having for example irrigation department is having so they may having a very substantial good area for a area which is under forest cover which have very high con high conservation value so there was amendment made in the wildlife protection act those areas can be also brought into the protection network or protected area network and if such area such government land apart from forest department land brought into a protected area network it will be put into the category of community reserve now beyond all these things there are certain areas uh, with not, not within the not neither the forest department nor the nor the line department having but the private people the private community or the individual or the community is having the, their own private land and they feel that this area is good for conserving this particular, particular species or a group of species or for watershed or what biodiversity if that community resolves that area to be put into a conservation network that particular area will be, uh, will be notified as a community reserve now i would rather these are the four categories of uh, areas which will be uh, known as the protected area in the uh, in, 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 in 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 scenario is there now well i would uh, again want to flag off uh, to, to all of you that all this protected area all this majority of the protected i would say in indian context the 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 protected area has been surrounded by to i mean or, or either within the area or, or or the peripheral of the area lots of people are staying and it is something uh, i mean uh, different from what you see in african countries where huge stress of undisturbed tracts of forests are there or protected area is there but in india it is nothing like it is not not like that around 6 lakh villages uh, are actually staying in an around forest area so so you can Im and uh, if you see the socio economic uh, status of this particular community or that settlement or people they are living actually their their standard of living the human development index of this particular uh, community or for, uh, forest dwellers are far far below than what are in the what do you call a semi urban to urban to a town or villages is concerned in general uh, uh, general status is concerned the the uh, uh, the reason behind is something like that the most of this uh, uh, villages or the people dwelling in and around the forest area <coughs> they are excuse me they are not able to get those development benefits what the district administration or uh, are uh, generally used to give because this uh, uh, these settlements are very very far uh, uh, inaccessible areas very inside the forest area so naturally what happened the the developmental activities not actually reaches them so so the uh, socio economic uh, level of this particular villages or the forest dwellers or tribes living in and around the forest area particularly the protected area wildlife sanctuary national parks are in very very uh, deprived conditions and uh, or in other words it is something like if you put this particular slide the forest area what we uh, or, or the protected area what you see the center portion the green portion is be surrounded by a community which is which is put in why i put in red that it is something law is in it reflects the pressure so when the communities are there in an around forest area and uh, we want to protect the green area and the communities have been deprived of the development activities of the district administrator state government whatever they naturally put pressure on the forest for their livelihood so so we are we are we are the, the challenges of a forest department of forest conservation is very 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 become very challenging in this particular scenario now in other in other uh, what you call in a literature language or i would rather put it into something like that the conservation while you're talking about forest or forest conservation or, or or the protection in the wildlife sanctuary that is that is something like an oasis in the midst of the, the socio economic desert the forest or the sanctuary is something like that in the mid of a socio economic desert why i am mean, interpreting a socio economic desert is the people are living in starvation in and around the forest area people living in desperation in and around the forest area people living in in um, uh, non empowerment or uh, they 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 are they are not empowered their their livelihood is in shambles they are they have been deprived of the, the social uh, social stability economic stability so virtually all the pressures will come onto the forest now but at the same time forest uh, forest or resources or sanctuaries we have lots of uh, our capital our resources in our hand we have social capital the people are there the society is there the villages are there 
we have they, they are been working on with the uh, the in and around agriculture agrarian farming is there so the physical capital is already in and around human capital human uh, that uh, people are already in and around are there the most importantly the natural capital the resource and what forest department or forest is there or rivers is there the uh, trees are there the timbers are there uh, the minus forest produce are there so uh, so that's called a natural uh, natural capital and the revenue or income for the people is the capital uh, if these are the different resources in and around a forest area in and around a, a, sand, a, a wildlife sanctuary or something like that so if this resources has to be uh, uh, what do you call uh, sustainably we have to manage uh, it says in, in a very balancing manner such that our natural resources should not be depleted it should be well, it should be. I would. Say, I would rather. I would. Uh, won't say the exploited. It should be harvested to a in in a very sustainable manner that the the human capital will grow, the social capital will be strengthened, the capital in general for the revenues can be uh, can can go up. At the same time, yeah, the natural resources can whatever will be harvested it can it have a, a sufficiently uh, the what you call a recharge time to replenish back. And such that it is a win-win situation for all of us. And most importantly, wildlife or, or the biodiversity dependent within the forest is concerned. Now, so that the challenges or the concept has been evolved is eco Why, why, why eco development? What is eco development? Now, I told that earlier the people of the, the living in around the forest area are actually highly dependent on forest and they, they are uh, why because uh, because they are, uh, they are uh, what we call uh, the district administration or state government or whatever national government uh, their uh, development activities not reaches to them not reach to them and so they put pressure on the forest and the uh, pressure in the forest in terms of raising pressure in terms of the food collection pressure in terms of the unsustainable uh, collection of uh, resources sometimes they involve in illegal activities like um, either they fell the trees to, to to sustain the livelihood or if not they fell the tree, they may they may uh, they may form some sort of nexus or the or in between uh, uh, character for the illegal activities it also go further higher into it, it, the deprivation may lead to even the poaching of the things uh, they require they don't have money. They have to live, make the livelihood. They live the. They have to, uh, to sustain their family. They need food in their houses. They need protein in their houses. So the protein, easy protein, and uh, and uh, free protein or available protein will be the the animals in the forest. So they hunt. So unless otherwise, this particular uh, community in and around forest to be empowered to such a level that they they, they should have enough food for them. Uh, they, they should have enough money to sustain their own to to buy their own firewood or maybe they go or or may further go up they can uh, they can even go for a gas connection of their own they can they can may, uh, earn the such level that they may send uh, their uh, kids to the schools uh, in, in a, and make them uh, what you call teach in a better manner so all these things is really required and uh, <coughs> earlier for department Department, um, forest department was uh, taken a different type of role. That is not our job. For it's a job of a tribal department. It's a job job of the local self government. It is job of district administration. It's a job of the animal husbandry department to take all those cares, and we uh, agriculture department to take care of these people. We are supposed to take care of our my protection of the area of the forest, or maybe or 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 the planting of the acti planting activity or or the extraction of logging or whatever is there but we we are not concerned with the the activities or development of the the, the community but off late it was realized that other department other line department may not reach them so so the pressure is coming to the forest so forest department should uh, do a proactive job in in as in a vertical approaching them in approaching the local community who are dependent on the forest point of view to and uh, to take care of their uh, their uh, what they call their requirements their requirements in terms of livelihood their requirement in terms of nutritional support their requirement in terms of empowering uh, socially empowering economically and, uh, and empowering institutionally 
all those supports we require them to support them and all the supports which is in around to this particular community it is uh, brought under the definition of eco development it is something like that uh, all those activities which aims at empowering the forest dependent com communities in in terms of ecologically empowering them sorry uh, uh, socially empowering them economically empowering them, institutionally empowering them in such a manner that they 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 empowered in general as a community and most importantly by doing so their pressure to the forest can be reduced that is the idea so so i would be, i i think i'm making you all clear that what what is the definition of eco development it in, in other terms it has those activities which are yeah, aimed at the development, holistic development of the uh, the forest dependent communities, socially, economically, institutionally, such that their dependency on the forest can be reduced. So, uh, which which further help in the conservation of the forest, protection of the forest, or conservation of wildlife or biodiversity. This is how the eco development definition is concerned. Now. I would uh, rather put uh, another very important question to all, which uh, some of our people get confused. What is the difference between eco-development and eco-tourism? There is a substantial difference between, or there is a huge difference between eco-development and eco-tourism. Uh, eco-tourism is, is actually is a, those activity which is been aimed primarily for something related to tourism or nature tourism. There are something in and around the nature to tourism related activities called tourism, eco tourism, and eco which also aims at what again empowering the local community, giving employment, etc. All those things, but it is tourism oriented activity. In other words, eco tourism is also is one of the activity under eco development. It eco tourism will be under uh, one of the activity under eco development. So uh, uh, there is a uh, eco development may take care of, for example, we support agriculture support agriculture uh, to the the local community. We support fisheries to the local community. We support tourism to the local community tourism activity. So all these three activities are the activity under eco development, and eco tourism is one of the activity under eco development. So I I think I'm making you very clear the difference between the eco development and eco tourism. Now. These, uh, with these two uh, background, eco tourism and eco development, which I will be using loosely in an, uh, in, my, in, my, in my presentation, uh, because uh, in Kerala's context, these eco tourism activities are called, I would say that community driven or community based eco tourism had uh, become a role model across the country and across the worldwide and eco development in general. So, I, these two models become very successful models uh, in, uh, in Kerala is concerned. And we are the flag bearer. We are the we in this particular field. And two areas or two sanctuaries or two protected area where done an excellent job in this uh, eco development activities or eco tourism activity are Peria Tiger Reserve and Parambiklum Tiger Reserve. My presentation flow or uh, will be actually co concentrating on these two models, and uh, I will be taking uh, quickly on these two models. One is Parambiklum Tiger Reserve, and second is Peria Tiger Reserve. So first is Parambiklum Tiger Reserve. My, for my information of all the uh, viewers or my friends is that in Kerala we have two tiger reserves. Uh, one is Parambiklam Tiger Reserve and Periyar Tiger Reserve. Parambiklam is been actually situated in Palakkad district. It is adjoining the Tamil Nadu border. The access to the general public is also only through uh, Tamil Nadu. It is come. It is uh, abutting the animal tiger reserve of uh, Tamil Nadu. If you want to enter into Parambiklam, uh, you have to uh, enter through animal tiger reserve. Uh, that uh, and uh, from that it entered into the uh, to Parambiklam. Now Parambiklam uh, the Tiger Reserve is concerned. In fact, before I talk to that, uh, both the Tiger Reserve, generally the activities of a park of I would say both are park only. We call it is, uh, in in uh, other terms uh, we we also call it as uh, park management. And in in a in a, in a park management of, of any or uh, in the sanctuary national park concern, we revolve around the activities protection related activity. Uh, we have to put that is a white way that is a major activity. Then we have a habitat improvement. Habitat improvement virtually we should ensure some good foraging for the wildlife species, and or uh, or the dwelling uh, the important accommodation or the I mean I would not accommodation I would rather put in a is some sort of shelter management for the uh, for the wildlife. And uh, uh, apart from the 
the food and the shelter we also work on certain water management aspects so the the habitat management revolves around the water management the shelter management and the the, the foraging or food for the wildlife the population management is uh, it is in in indian context actually uh, it is something the these those species which are facing uh, the critically endangered level we are been uh, concentrating on uh, how to recoup those population back uh, so that, that basically population has been crashed we have been uh, able to recoup the population back by uh, preserving or conserving the species classically all our tiger population is conserved or or maybe the tar population or elephant etc but uh, population management in in our legal terms it also includes the reduction or or, or i would say the culling of species uh well that 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 is uh, that means if the population is going very high uh we can take a call on reduction of the species or by culling it but in uh, in uh, in uh, indian context we we seldom use this particular provision of the management or wildlife protection act though for your information recently of of late we are using it for the culling of wild boars in kerala for last one two months we have taken a very um, a strong step in this direction where wild boars are the population has been gone up and they are actually doing lots of damage in and around the the, uh, the villages so uh, we have taken a call to cull some of the the problematic uh, um, wild boars veterinary care is again very very vital the health issues there uh, if any disease is concerned and we we come we, we treat them or in case some injuries occurred sometime we uh, we treat them we rehabilitate them we we uh, release them back to the wild and uh, nature education very very vital for any park management uh, our and i would say that some of the uh, some of uh, the viewers what we uh, listening to i would rather put in some sort of education part also so nature because that's very become uh, that's how we 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 uh, mobilize our uh, uh, the uh, young ambassadors in the coming days to protect for the nature the eco development i was told earlier eco tourism where then visitor management becomes very very important part of a national park or sanctuary nowadays uh, and of course staff area so this is for my uh, for the information of, of all the friends that the protected area management actually it's a very interesting and very dynamic thing and very challenging thing for a park manager and a team of the people what we all do so it revolves road revolves on yeah, n number of activity where eco developer eco tourism will act as one of the activity of a park manager now so but i was talking about parambiklam it is it was actually so old uh, to 85 feet is sanctuary area but we have added another additional territorial area from the nearby it is something 300 plus now it is now uh, notified at tigers in 2007 and um, and it has now the area is come to 642 square feet including the buffer area uh, parambiklam tiger reserve have six settlements uh, in, uh, which includes uh five tribal settlements and one uh six tribal settlement and one non tribal settlement okay i don't want to go in detail about it so it it has all uh, values like any other parks ecologically it's very very vital and uh, it forms an important part of our, our western ghat um, uh, forest and it it is if you see the the geography of parambiklam tiger reserve it is connected with the, the anamala tiger reserve anamala tiger reserve again connected with uh, i have a, have a connectivity with uh, chinnar sanctuary uh, you have um, uh, you have uh, munar uh, munar wildlife area is there munar area is there which is again that part is again connected with the the kode air kode hills where palni sanctuary is there so i would say that uh, uh, again in in the in the um, chinnar and um, uh, munar area you have n number of smaller type of sanctuary like pambadam sanctuary is there madikattam sanctuary is there kurinjimala all the sanctuaries and uh, national parks are also there so in yeah, erviklam national park so in this particular um, whole landscape with anamala tiger reserve which again forms around 1000 plus square Kilometer. So it's a very vital 3,000 plus square kilometer of a landscape, which is popularly called, uh, known as animal landscape. So uh, it's a part of the animal landscape. I would rather say it's a heart of animal landscape.
and it has economic value. Uh, the tourism value is there, irrigation, the, the, the Paramic Aliyar project is there, cultural value, lots of tribal communities do so, uh, to live there. Now, the Parambiklon Tiger Reserve uh, do have, or, or, or I would say they're still having, or it had also, uh, it is it's a vast terrain area, its interstate boundary is there, illicit removal of sandal is still there, or uh, though it is reduced, forest fire, uh, tourism pressures. And uh, I was I, I, actually what I'm talking about is a scenario before the eco development or eco tourism uh, has been initiated in a big way. So I would uh, I would the, the intensity or the quantum of the pressure was much higher or more earlier. Now it has been regulated to a larger extent. Plastic minis, under regulator vehicular traffic, grazing pressure, going unemployment. Now, now the challenge. Manager is how through the eco tourism or community based eco tourism or the eco tourism initiatives, how we convert these threats into opportunity is a very, very important task. And how we had done the uh, they had taken some innovative steps in this direction. Now, I will tell you how the scenario was earlier. Uh, a perimeter tiger uh, uh, reserve used to a uh, lot of tra traffic used to come in terms of private vehicles, the around 200 300 vehicles do fly every day. I mean, um, I mean, I would say in the peak of the days, not every day, uh, but uh, it was substantial every day also was uh, running around 200, 300 plus vehicles. Lots of um, uh, plastic in terms of water, mineral water dumpings, uh, garbages, disturbance to the park. Uh, I would say this is all related to the vehicle traffic. But so the, when lots of uh, unregulated private vehicle enter the park, they don't have any control in the speed and all those things. Uh, so they do lots of do hit uh, animals and and uh, end of the day animal mortality do occur, and, uh, un, and uh, which leaves the unhealthy environment in and around. And uh, most importantly, when 300 vehicles fly inside the park, we don't have any control over this public. And uh, there, there are many unruly public do also come, unlike you all who have been sensible, who have been sensitized. But there are many people who, I mean, just they come for uh, just uh, merrymaking or picnicking. So for them, it is uh, they, they get down any places, they, they throw the stones at the animals, they, uh, they uh, what do you call, the drink inside the park, the, the, the uh, liquor consumption, under the liquor consumption, this further their control is very much uh, limited. And uh, so that all lead to lots of issues. And we don't, and most importantly, we, the uh, forest department don't, don't, uh, doesn't have a sufficient manpower to control all this tourism, in you know, unregulated tourism or, uh, or this much people entering into the park. Now, another scenario was that uh, lots of uh, 500 plus cattle used to be there in uh, Paramiklum Tiger Reserve. And, uh, and you know, cattle uh, is not a welcome sign in the park. And uh, the cattle, which uh, which are the carriers of uh, diseases, uh, they they actually uh, graze the same area where the wild the wild species do graze, which uh, which will which ultimately the vector carrying the diseases, the the uh, the, uh, the virus or the fun, uh, whatever uh, the bacteria or whatever they they may transmit. They they become uh, there are lots of contagious diseases are there, which will transmit it from the cattle to the uh, to the wildlife or vice versa. It, it, it can be FMD, they, uh, for put in more diseases, it can be anthrax, and like that, many other diseases, uh, the very, very contagious diseases are there, which leads to a large scale mortality. And Paramiklam had a history of large scale uh, mortality of animals by this contagious disease like uh, foot and mouth diseases. And uh, we have and we have issues in anthrax where thousands of wildlife went washed away in a, in a span of days. And the competition, but again, they, again they'll compete with the wildlife. And most importantly, the uh, you can see that earlier the slide had seen. No, you, you can see the black cattle are there. Sometimes the, from a, from a distance it look like a gore. People will be will be very uh, very excited to see a gore. But when they, when they realize that they say it's the end of their local cattle, so they'll get dejected. As for tourism point of view, it's a, I mean whether you enter to a wildlife sanctuary or cattle sanctuary, something like that. So so the the even the the visitors also get dejected by seeing these cattle and all. So another issue was plastics. You know, the visitors uh, entering into the park will, al will always carry uh, this type of issues. They uh, they have the kurkere with them. They may have the pet bottles with them. The the, the, the kids are there. They have to feed them with some foods. So all this they carry all these plastics or or or, or um, pet bottles, which virtually before uh, some uh, leaving to the park they all dump into the forest. 
uh, which lead to the uh, lots of uh, dumping of plastic garbage in the world. And unfortunate part is apart from this, these plastics uh, sometimes uh, they also carry some food materials. Uh, the, the the it will get scavenged by the wildlife, and over the period some of the species will get attracted and get addicted. area yeah. uh, the animals uh, uh, like for example rhesus macaque or the giant squirrel or some uh, i mean uh, some of the uh, some of the species uh, like even uh, the uh, the wild boar also they they will be very happy to in and around to the people because they are, we used to feed them unfortunately we used to feed them and uh, they leave the nature uh, they they slowly get addicted or or they try uh, change to the food habit to this type of uh, these artificial human food so uh, of, uh, then what happened they not leave that area and uh, if not then when we uh, not give the food to them they start demanding and they start uh, they become aggressive and that's the reason where some of the places you have, you have and, uh, got the news that the uh, research macaque or the bonnet macaque all they has bitten the uh, tourists or bitten the uh, bitten the, the visitors so the reason we are only to be blamed we used to give this food or we leave this particular uh, uh, plastic waste or something like that which will try which will change the food habit of the, the wildlife which is not uh, right, a right sign for uh, any 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 wildlife is concerned now another very important issue was in parambiklam was rising unemployment it is as i told earlier that uh, the in and around forest area the employment level is very very uh, low because at the uh, the development act is won't reach us there but in general also in forest department we also give lots of support uh, to in terms of logging activity or planting activity but in a sanctuary in parambiklam in concern till now 2000 uh, it was used to be a way one of the important timber uh, division and rather than sanctuary it used to uh, lots of teak plantation is there and uh, uh, teak used to get extracted so what happened lots of employment used to be there earlier so, so people somehow used to be happy but in 2000 so in the the order of the Godavarman uh, case has come where the clear-cut direction has come that no felling in the protected area so now suddenly and uh, apart from the line department or uh, the the uh, district administration job is not there apart from forest department job is also gone so that has led to a very high level of unemployment which uh, led to be what you call the local people was in highly deprived condition and this this has led the people who has in a very resentment against the the uh, the forest department resentment against the administration they start joining the hands with smugglers they are, are the poachers and they may not be directly involved in the activity but they will indirectly involving they may act as informers to them they may act as a, some sort of a uh, what you call supporting uh, supporting uh, person to them in this illegal activity because it is, I would I would rather won't blame them because they were actually no other option to sustain their livelihood so they had uh, they had joined this illegal hands so with this background in Parambiklam Tiger I'm talking a scenario in post, uh, sorry, in pre-2006 uh, time, 2006 era, where underloaded traffic was there, plastic garbage issues were there, the, the local cattle was very high, uh, the rising unemployment, which I told you earlier, growing offenses was there, and uh, yes, uh, so some of the uh, the settlement have the uh, some organic farming like uh, organic ginger, organic turmeric, all those things are there. Where, and even honey is there. So the the, uh, the middlemen used to come and uh, they, they exploit these people because uh, they are already in a very very uh, very called uh, in a very uh, unempowered condition. So these middlemen used to give them very some paltry money, and they used to get all those materials, and uh, and this middlemen exploit them very high. So with this background, the Ecodarwin initiative in in Parambiklam has been initiated. So we found for these communities are uh, that we had talked to these communities and we had told them to form into some sort of a small small groups empowered them we call as eco development committees the trust building exercise has been uh, we worked out awareness for the conservation has been given and all this eco development each community each 
uh, settlement, we made one eco-development committee, and under the umbrella called the Forest Development Agency, which is a registered society, and uh, and a series of initiatives was launched to uh, to empower this local community, and not only empower them to to reduce the dependency in forest, and that that was the idea behind all this initiative, and we have initiated a series of community-based ecotourism activities. Which uh, include an island nest. It's a very interesting program we have initiated. Uh, 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 this island used to be uh, full of this. that pro that presentation. And uh, we, we have... yeah, can you play, uh, can you repeat? Uh, the presentation became small because uh, I think someone else tried to present in between. So I think like you can can you please stop the uh, present presenting and take again, then it will come back. Yeah, you can click on that present now and uh, uh, stop presenting and once again. Is, 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 no? Yeah, and I, now present can again. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's not seen the presentation. Okay, so now again present now, sir. Uh, can you see the slides? Yeah, now the slides are not seen. Uh, so just say. Uh, click on the person now again and say a window and that same for same operations. Uh, I have to go back, huh? Yeah, go. Mm, okay. Then what, what I, I can, should do now? Again, said present. Click on that person now. Okay. And then uh, a window and select that uh, uh, PPT. Okay. okay. Uh, a request to everyone, uh, please do not uh, uh, click on the present button, uh, then again this will happen. Sir, now it's, uh, yeah, now it, it came. Now it's, visible, now it's visible? Yeah, now it's visible, sir. You can go ahead. Okay. So this, this program is called, I, I, I don't know how much time, I just want to rush through. Uh, the, uh, this is program is called Island Nest. This island used to be full of sandalwood. It's now all the sandalwood. So what happened? The lots of sandal smuggling used to happen in this particular area. We not had sufficient manpower to go and uh, to camp here in a continuous manner, and uh, so sandalwood smuggling was going on. So we thought we thought a small hut was developed there, and uh, this hut uh, uh, we had taken some five. We we'll take five visitors to go and stay this particular uh, hut in the in this island. And uh, they stay overnight and come back. And by doing so, around uh, five, uh, you know, so five rowers will uh, in a boat. They take in a small rowing boat. They take them, row them to go there, stay there, and come back. So they, in a rotation manner. So five means uh, next day another five guys will go. So around ten people get employment in this particular thing. And uh, five visitors go and stay there and come back. Most importantly, uh, by doing so. There was a presence in the the the, the human presence was there uh, in this particular island, which become a deterrent for the smugglers to enter to this particular area. And actually, uh, suddenly we seen that, that there is no such smuggling is to be. In, I mean, or sandwich smuggling was there uh, after this program was initiated. So I would say that sometimes uh, I mean uh, our program uh, used to help in in the protection aspect also. Not only that, it uh, it, it has reduced the sandwich smuggling there. It has been. Uh, what you call given employment 10 people and um, uh, 10 local community there and uh, most importantly it generate it has started generating some sufficient money which will again become a corpus for the park management for the other activities other related activities now next is uh, is a, is a small bamboo rafting program has initiated there. Uh, we say it's a it's a very small program. I, I would say that in Parambi, rather than Parambikla period become a very big hit there. Parambikla not was not very much hit there. Uh, this bamboo rafting program is a very in, interesting aspect. I would like to say that the the cost benefit cost ratio for this particular program is very very high. I would say that it must be in in um, uh, maybe 500 times or more. If, if I, my investment will be hardly some 10,000 rupees. In, I, I would give a give example career point of view. I invested 10,000 rupees in for the bamboo raft, and uh, the the revenue from the bamboo rafting for that year would have been something uh, has just around 40 lakhs. So you can imagine the kind of uh, the revenue we had made from the bomber raft, uh, bomber rafting. Some of the programs you need some capital investment, but this particular uh, the uh, particular bomber rafting program, the capital investment also very very meager. So it's very interesting program in terms of the the uh, the uh, the kind of uh, the. Uh, 
uh, the experience we give to the visitor the same time it is a the economically it is a very highly uh, income generating program the tribal symphony program is basically the the art and uh, heritage culture of the tribal uh, group have been uh, regrouped to give us some sort of a cultural uh, cultural program which helps them in not only employment also their their uh, uh, what do you call heritage been able to intact the another program we initiated is the tent and niche program in paramitlam where they are they around uh, eight swiss cottages we have uh, laid there in the anapadi uh, it's actually package program uh, and where a series of activities been in inbuilt where you have the what you call uh, the trekking is involved the the safari is involved food is is involved uh, the um, uh, nature uh, trail is involved and uh, so this program has given uh, some sort of employment for the scoop there a uh, guided uh, guided uh, some guides are there bamboo uh, the bamboo rafting is made a package part of it tribal dance program is part of a part package of it trekking is there bird watching program is involved in that and uh, interpretation center visit is there wildlife movies so those person who is running the interpretation center wildlife movies get an employment those are the, those, some bird watchers involved in this program so they'll get an employment trekkers will get an employment so this program is given a series of employment for the the uh, communities there it is one of the this well uh, sort out of uh, ecotourism program in uh, paramitlam and for your kind information and uh, again this small machan has been uh, initiated there and and this is very in, uh, important initiative which we are very happy to share with you all i was telling you know around 200 300 vehicles to fly per day uh, in the peak of the days in paramitlam we stop all the private vehicle entry into the park and uh, from the entrance and we had uh, we had purchased and uh, some some uh, safari buses well this initiative uh, was very interesting because the uh, we don't have money from the uh, from for the fund to purchase these buses and we had actually taken a loan from the local bank from our uh, uh, forest development agency has taken a loan from the local bank and we had purchased uh, some five six five vehicles and we taken a risk because if we not able to repay it we will be in deep trouble but uh, but fortunately within a year itself we have recouped back and most importantly the, the, the revenue is substantial enough and we has generated sufficient money to not only recoup the the, the uh, amount give a, a, a series of employment local people also and most importantly around 200 300 pike uh, vehicles fly into the for into the paramitlam reserve is totally stop at the entrance so this program also have very very important ecological impact uh, point of view now another uh, program is uh, of course we have started some paid nature camps uh, for the we, uh, apart from free camps we also run lots of very interesting paid camps for different uh, target groups and uh, apart from that lots of eco development initiative i was talking about some eco to some point of view there are other initiative like eco development initiative like paramitl dhara where the the plastic pet bottle water has been uh, will uh, will be stopped at the entrance we'll give their own ro unit water there we have honey unit uh, where we the the honey of the local tribal community uh, we used to do the processing and the value addition and we had branded as paramitl honey and uh, uh, we have uh, started some sort of honey uh, bee wax balm unit is there we have paper bag units uh, we had to start a very interesting paper bag unit the very uh, interesting in the sense that the the all the plastics will be stopped the entrance and the, this paper will be compulsory will given to those people and uh, it not only reduce plastic but the most importantly uh, the the employment to the local community in terms of paper bag running so organic licensing has been initiated and uh, this is some of the initiative i just want to quickly go through this is how the entrance there then uh, we have plastic reduction unit a small uh, all the plastic so collectively made into a uh, clean it wash it and make it shred it into pieces and uh, from the the plastic collector so from the within the park will shred it into pieces and uh, and the plastic will be uh recycled actually we we had type with the local we had a type i don't know what the present structure now and uh, and then coimbatore we will take this uh, shredded plastics collected from the from the park and we recycle into uh, again a product or souvenirs we make some key things out of it and we sell it from the uh, from the entrance it was a very good initiative that time we initiated i'm not I'm not very sure of the present thing uh, i'm just taking this very inter interesting 
initiative we have taken so this the honey and validation in the honey and uh, we had got a organic certification for one community there they used to do only organic certification and we got international organic licensing and uh, from the lacon agency and uh, we have a series of product called organic coffee or uh, organic kasturi manjal organic pepper all this thing this particular organic certification has led to some around 25 to 30% of organic premium so again this money will go to the pump to the local community there so uh, very interesting so when we started the program something uh, uh, this eco development eco tourism in parambik lung we had only 29000 in our kitty i remember still remember but uh, by the time 2010 i remember it is something around 3 crores it has generated now i am very happy to share that the latest figure something around 4 crores unfortunately this year covid is there so this year the revenue would have been crashed down so it has all things is led to the social empowerment you will have uh, lots of uh, employment for the local community it also helped in uh, uh, direct employment to by the guides or trekkers or 100 people and uh, indirect to around all the families in the i would i've been very happy to share that in parambik lo almost everybody has been uh, has been involved directly involved in this type of development and eco tourism at the the uh, advantage is that parambik lo is a small area the well, uh, number of families also very less so everybody has been able to get some employment or some revenue out of this whole thing the vehicle uh, vehicle up, uh, reduction by inters 200 300 vehicle is reduced and uh, the offense because since the people are getting employment their their in uh, their linkage with the uh, offenses has been also been reduced so the pressure has been on the forest is also reduced and most important i would try to more than uh, share to all the people there it's a long chain of uh, in interaction with them and uh, we are able to uh, to uh, to get lots of trust from the local community to sell their cattle because they are getting employment directly or indirectly from the forest department by eco tourism eco development and interestingly all the cattle in parambiklam tiger is we are able to sell it out so it has become a very rare park in the country where 100% cattle and it's not 10% by the way it's 100% cattle has been taken out of the park it is a 100% cattle free sanctuary a, a rare achievement which are very this is the last photo i had, i personally taken this photo i remember this last lot of the vehicle has been carrying the the local cattle from the from the park so cat the park has been made 100% cattle free the most importantly hundreds of people directly involved so you can see this young uh, young um, uh, young or I, i would say even some old guys is also there getting uh, some sort of empowerment you can see some the 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 commitment or the uh, the the positiveness in their face they used to be one i don't want to tell or by name or something like they may be directly involved in some sort of offenses earlier but they now got a uh, decent job the social uh, social recognition is there and uh, they are very happy with the running this type of eco development eco tourism activity and most importantly this uh, this people in the green uh, what do you call dresses or green uh, green uniform they act as uh, additional support or our our uh, to our frontline staff in protection of the forest had not these people in this green dresses they would have joined some illegal activity and they would create lots of issues to the forest now they become of a, a part and parcel of the park management protection of the park management whenever the the, the ecodos ecodos is not there they also take part actively in the park protection they they, they come along with the forest department to Uh, well the all is uh, giving employment to the community this uh, is substantially generate some revenue it will help them in crop protection in the monitoring of the, uh, the wildlife monitoring in the uh, monsoon patrolling and uh, the the protection to the camps uniforms to the camps food rush food rush camps normal budget we are not able to support but this uh, eco tourism may be able to give us some sort of the funding support to support this type of ancillary activity which help in the protection of the park now parambik lo all this initiatives have helped in parambik lo uh, in the local community citizen satisfaction and helping in the support the park management and making plastic uh, making the park a cattle free area and uh, uh, are very highly regulated in terms of vehicles 
Well, I, I, I don't want to like this paramic example paramic period. I won't uh, take much time. Just run through the slides because of the thing was It's about the uh, industry initiative to imperial is concerned. Uh, no, about just I'll just which is only it is this is very interesting when we all we know. Uh, some of them initiated in prayer is similar type of activity, similar type of inter that the, the concept will be similar only. The program will be different. We have prayer tiger trail. This prayer tiger trail program, I want to uh, emphasize upon particular program. Uh, this program is run by a group of people that used to be smugglers one, one once upon a time. This called the binders to smuggle the binders, the bark to collect and uh, they should smuggle it out. So which caused heavy mortal cinnamon trees in the in the in the Peria Tiger Reserve. We called them, we had a dialogue with them, we had uh, we had told them that you better get rid of this illegal activity, we'll give you a decent type of employment, and we started something program for Peria and Peria Trail. And by the Peria Tiger Trail program. This once used to uh, the, this, uh, the cinnamon uh, smugglers. They used to run this program and uh, then uh, take the visitors to the uh, into the park for one day trekking to the park. They stay in a small tent there. They come back on the second day. And this program is very very popular and especially it got many national international recognition. Uh, not only in terms of program um, uh, concept point of view, it has actually uh, able to uh, give a alternate employment to those uh, anti-social people. Once upon a time, they become a park. Um, uh, friend now they become a they, they are part and parcel of our conservation and uh, this is called jungle patrol is another very interesting program where the buffer area of the park we have some sandalwood smuggling was to happen this area we need a continuous patrolling throughout night so we had devised a program that five people can join this patrolling team for three hours in a three different times like seven, seven to ten o'clock night not 10 p.m to 1 p.m 1 a.m. and 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. The, the whole throughout the night and uh, early morning, this patrolling will go. A five of the visitor can join that particular team. And interestingly, what happened? This particular program has given not, not only uh, I mean uh, given a very good uh, uh, experience for the visitors. Most importantly, the presence of the vis uh, visitors it, uh, taking this program ensured that my staff has not sleeping. Uh, otherwise, sometimes our staffs used to get uh, what you call uh, get sometime uh, get uh, because it's very natural. Uh, they may get tired or they may not. They may get lethargic sometimes. But when visitors are there, there is there is some sort of pressure on them that they have to take on some trekking across. So that also ensured that uh, the patrolling has been ensured, is giving very important experience to the visitors. In other words, visitors are paying from their pocket to protect uh, our forest. And uh, it's a very interesting initiative which has uh, got a very, very, I mean, different type of attention across. And bamboo rafting, which I told earlier, bamboo grew again a package program where bamboo huts programs are there. They are tiger nature walk. Our tribal communities run this particular program there. General Petra told tribal heritage bamboo grow, bamboo border hiking programs. So all these programs has help in social empowerment of the community there. This particular photo, you can see some of the ladies there. These are the ladies which are working on uh, on a voluntary basis. These are the wives or sisters or mothers of those, uh, I mean, um, uh, those those guides or all those people are there. They come across, you now. we also do want to do some part and part protection who give us employment. These ladies actually uh, do the protection of sandalwood area in the daytime on a voluntary basis. This group is called Vasanda Sena for your kind of information. And this uh, group has got lots of national uh, national awards also. And we have an interesting called the Periyar Foundation come into picture where uh, the fund has been flowed back, all the fund is flowed back and which help in the uh, the management of the park including the local, uh, local uh, employment. If you see the institutional mechanism, we have park management, we have Peria Foundation, a trust is running. We have eco development committees where the, the east and west, you have the forest development agency for east, forest development agency for the west. So they all, all work in a very integrated manner. Well, most importantly, as I would uh, rather, uh, rather to put across a question to all of you or, or in our dot will be there. Whether this type of ecotourism point of view or all those products are there is 
something like uh, lots of fruits we can sing uh, we are able to harvest whether we can harvest is low hanging fruit uh, fruits only or will we we'll uh, humans will be greedy enough to overcome this thing and damage uh, the the balance of the nature which will be that will irreversible that's a very vital a pertinent question to all of us uh, especially the conservationists uh, conservationists uh, are there activists are there they they keep on questioning these things well i would rather say that uh, all this thing can be worked out if you have give that we uh, we give trust uh, we trust these are communities and uh, they should be owning this but our, our resources they should have ownership of the resources and they, they, then they will ensure that the resources should be uh, harvested in a sustainable manner and uh, we should ensure our uh, our policies our concepts our management uh, principles or in intervention in, in such a manner that our our, uh, our biodiversity conservation should be in in such a manner that it should uh, it should actually uh, they should do from the heart from the mind uh with this thing i would like to conclude my presentation i hope i i, I don't i don't want to, uh, to take much of the time and more more most importantly i would uh, take on the questions from you all and uh, with this i will be conclude my presentations and uh, yes now i am ready for your any of the things to interact with you yeah, thank you thank, thank you, you very all. much for it's for that it was a very good uh, experience uh, giving that ex example of uh, arambikulam tiger reserves say like one how it transformed from from like that uh, unruly thing to the to a proper tiger reserve just mm -hmm. great uh, okay so now either people can uh, unmute and ask questions or like type in the chat box so i actually like i had one question sir so uh, the animal eye tiger reserve parambikulam tiger reserve all this uh, total comes around 3000 square kilometers right so will that be a uh, biosphere reserve like nilgiris in future or will there be a i, I would say, i mean biosphere reserve is a is a different concept altogether uh, i i would say that uh, if you put across the the status of biosphere reserve may not be that legally sound uh, as of now uh, compared to what we are having now if you see the uh, if you uh, biosphere reserve biosphere reserve doesn't find legally uh, a part of our uh, wildlife uh, what you call legislation or legal framework uh, the the kind of uh, the legal protection what we can give under a, a sanctuary or a national park is far for even a tiger is a tiger is a point of view is far more uh, stringent rather than biosphere so i would rather uh, not vouch for if it happens a biosphere is well and good if it is not a biosphere reserve so as of now the, uh, the the present reality is that the legal status the enforcement level of the present status is far far ahead than biosphere reserve now the biosphere reserve came in the is is a very old concept uh, old concept this is uh, the right concept i'm not talking the outdated concept i'm not telling is a concept where after the man and biosphere reserve uh, map has come into picture in the 70s something like that where uh, we should able to uh, govern the the or manage the the uh, forest in a landscape basis rather than we should not take the as a is is a, a, a there are planting activities there there will be a conservation activities there there is a human interface is there there will be development activities there so everything there everything should be go in a in a balanced manner such that the management of that particular area in a landscape based approach so that was a concept evolved that particular time and uh, uh, the, that's the reason where the nilgiri biosphere reserve came into uh, came into picture the agastyavana uh, biosphere reserve came into picture uh, but uh, if you if you see the list of biosphere reserve the anamalai uh, as of now not brought into that particular uh, biosphere reserve status or something like that but i i personally don't feel that uh, i mean um, that is that only the, the, the that should be the after putting the biosphere reserve only it will become better or something like that we have uh, we are been uh, as of another person status is also equally good or far better than the biosphere reserve okay sure sir uh, sanjay, sanjay and i have oh, sorry yeah go sanjay on, and sir, i have a question uh, rather yeah, uh, i think yeah, you know you, know, <laughs> you, you, yeah. you are my guru you can you can, uh, you can ask <laughs> not a question not a question as such 
No, you can explain how do you make uh, this development program sustainable, especially in the in times of COVID and uh, when there was a uh, ban on uh, tourism in Periyar. So how do you make it sustainable? Well, actually, this is very pertinent question uh, you had asked, Dan, and I, I think I'm very sure that and uh, many of our brainstorming time uh, with you and some of our all all uh, learned people or experts, we we had this uh, uh, this uh, discussion earlier also. To be very frank, we had uh, not not taken very seriously. Uh, we we never expected such type of tourism will take a backseat uh, uh, like this. Uh, we uh, the tourism almost uh, crashed in the protected area because of the COVID. This issue some of the people used to raise. Uh, well, this may happen. But we thought that it may not happen, but it has not happened. But somehow it's happened. Some of the things what we learned and we had a discuss earlier is that the, we should not focus only on ecotourism as a sustainable basis for the, uh, 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 what you call running the, uh, the, uh, the community there. Now, uh, the, uh, the most important thing is that how do you ensure the community with their, uh, in, uh, their protection Protein requirement with their their uh, food requirement. Food security is very very vital. Now in this uh, in this uh, scenario, uh, our our EcoDev initiative takes a very important part where their uh, their protein requirement in terms of how you supplement the, the in terms of protein uh, the uh, uh, what do you call do in uh, supplement in terms of uh, maybe whatever uh, whatever menu. Uh, the second thing is that how you raise the green pa organic farming in their area, how you how you increase them to some sort of a raising a good uh, a good uh, harvest, and uh, so that will ensure the food security point of view. The most important another part we learned the, during the COVID time there, and we can take these products and uh, we, these products can be the value addition point of view, and we can do some sort of marketing beyond the park where where uh, we can able to supply to the different uh, uh, different people or different uh, community or across as a classical example i'll tell you the honey the, we used to sell in our in our area or the the product we sell area which depends upon the people coming into the park and they buy it and we able to su support them now we have to come out a different type of uh, enterprising manner where we have to do this not only value addition, we should do some sort of a marketing beyond that area. One, one thing through the online type of interface is there, where you do uh, some of the money to forest has done something like that. Like typical our, what you call Amazon, all those, all those people are there, how they do it, online selling, all the platform, we have to do it. Second thing is that where the, the Uber group has, Uber Foods has come up, like that zomato has come up like that to some extent how you uh, how you uh, what you call one step ahead we can think about how to take this product to sell to different different area and uh, so now a small shift in the focus should be there apart from tourism how we ensure your food security then food security the food surplus is there how you make the value addition to it how you market it through online platform how you take this product to uh, some sort of a uh, um, uh, transport mechanism like a Uber Eats or or something like that to uh, beyond the park area to sustain them economically. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think uh, uh, one of the things you know that is the capacity building which you have made in Parambukla. And now you have the best biologists or naturalists and the photographers there. So I think capacity building of the Adivasis in both the places, it is beautiful. And I have heard uh, some of the tribes in Periyar speaking French, German and other languages also. So I think uh, that was one of the success of this program. Another thing, uh, I think the social status of the uh, tribes that has gone up like anything. Uh, I will just cite an example to add to your uh, uh, talk. That's, you know, I had the opportunity to take the field directors uh, of all, all over India in Peria to the uh, tribal colony, the Manan colony. And then I was asking the, the uh, that lady there, one Lakshmi, so what is the difference you feel? 
and uh, you know what was her answer i'll just say in malayalam and then i'll say mumba kumulil kodi povumbo mannathi vonu na paranjirunnathu ippo lakshmi vonu na parayunna so earlier people used to say that okay mannathi is going mannan lady is going but now they say lakshmi is going so that's a sort of uh, the feeling they have now and also the the they get the income they get from uh, pepper and the cardamom it's all marvelous and there is no middleman that's something great i think the mic that's true that's true yeah that's true uh i think uh, that's true that's true i, yeah. I can hear you saji yeah yeah you know i was just wondering you know aranyakam society should uh, take these questions uh whether the human interaction through eco tourism affects the biodiversity what's that whether the eco tourism interaction let us say the human interaction while taking tourism inside whether does it affect the biodiversity i think there is a question i am seeing it in the chat yeah, box yeah, okay, okay. On, on on behalf of iron you had asked that question right <laughs> actually it is a very 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 pertinent question very vital question had i not been in the forest department this question uh, as a part of a normal uh, passionate uh, uh, nature lover i would uh, ask the forest department or forest people very it's very natural question and as a forest department yes i also agree that even my presence in the uh, in the forest is a disturbance i mean uh, as, as, as simple as a biotic pressure any kind of biotic, any any presence into the forest is a disturbance in the natural balance now no question is that uh, i mean uh, there is a uh, there is something like that uh, you you just uh, trading of some of the issues i mean some of the things you are taking some portion out of the say 100 square kilometer one square kilometer we are been taking out for the ecotourism point of view though we take sufficient care to uh, to have the recharge back uh, or a sustainable manner or carrying capacity all those things are there but still uh even i mean uh, one person one percent of area but year marking for that uh, eco tourism that revenue is been pumped back uh, to empower the local community uh, which will be uh, which will be able to support or uh, protect some 99% of the area which otherwise if you not do almost 100 100% of the area will otherwise get damaged so if you if you if you think that perspective you are actually trading off some of our Uh, 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 issues or 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 some other ch challenges in a very limited area in a, in a somewhat balancing manner to take care of the larger interest of the forest point of view we just imagine that had we not done eco tourism of some say uh, 20 30 square kilometer in paramilkam tiger tiger reserve around 100 people are getting direct employment around 500 people are getting indirect employment these people would have been joined the illegal illegal fellows or they they will become a, a, what you call a puppet in terms of middleman they will damage the whole 600 square kilometer of area so that is how the issue is so we are the eco tourism act as a some sort of a tool in conservation it has to use as a tool but again it should not be misused it should not be more than that the 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 nature can afford it is something called we we should think very a uh, very much uh, uh, in a carrying capacity we, we call it carrying ecological carrying capacity there is some area the minimum area should be year mark and that that area should be such a manner that if you should give you sufficient breathing time to recoup to rejuvenate back and uh, such that it can able to give sufficient type of employment sufficient type of revenue to support a larger area larger uh, larger interest of the forest yeah sir hi uh, yeah we 100 percentage agree with that because like he, because we have some 10 percentage of area for eco tourism then most of the people who want to see the animals who want to take a photograph they can go into that area instead of like disturbing the larger area so that's that's actually excellent so, thing uh, so because just to, just to uh, break you in between i will stop you in between the, i i would say i am out of this many of the viewers are photographers in photographers or, or all over. i mean i would I, i would say that this photographers i mean you i mean all good people unless otherwise you you take the photograph uh, i mean you, i mean you you want generate that passion and the love towards that animal no? 
so unless uh, you take an animal uh, they, you, you you fall in uh, fall in love with that species then you start working about uh, you, how beautiful the species is we should be able to protect it then you should start the, that passion in you so sometimes it becomes a very important part to 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 sensitize you to to uh, to give some sort of education experience in you i uh, to to act as a catalyst in in you to ignite that passion in you so so, so this is sometimes is very very handy also unless uh, you see it uh, unless you appreciate it the 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 passion generation in you may not able to uh, to uh, by by only by talking in the class we may not able to do it so the nature appreciation uh, is also very very vital for the students for the photographers for the target even for the visitors you i don't think so all the visitors are are, are bad if so some bad people are also there they may come and see the area out of that while going back some in the back of the mind they will they i hear this forest was good we should able to have that forest in posterity we should so some sort of unknowingly that that uh, that type of sensitization will start igniting their mind yes sir yes sir and uh, there was another question sir do you think participatory forest management really helps to improve forest uh, conservation do we get any data regarding this there was a question uh, for example you, i had given in paramiklam very uh, the the offense uh, so i have not shown the graph there before 2006 the offenses was skyrocketing before 2006 the sandalwood uh, cases was skyrocketing uh, before 2006 the diseases in terms of contagious diseases are very high before 2006 the the employment the empowerment level was less so the the uh, so all the statistics shows that studies studies show that i mean uh, uh, before the participatory management the conservation was in the back seat after 2006 where the the, the participatory management come into picture we what we could able to reduce the uh, vehicle again it is health and conservation how you reduce the vehicle by giving some sort of ecotourism activities only we reduced it by we have reduced the sandwood smuggling again by participatory manners only we had done it reducing the sandwood smuggling we had again ensuring conservation by giving employment to the local community we had uh, we had reduced the middlemen uh, uh, if we reduce the middlemen that means again uh, they, are, uh, they they are not become a puppet in terms of middlemen and doing illegal activity again which in turn helps in conservation so and another very important part is that by doing co tourism Uh, we had generated a young army, a, a series of manpower. The forest department, as well, we virtually we are not having it. This young power, young young brigade, so hundreds plus of watchers, hundred plus of and the nature lover, I mean the naturalists are there. Whenever the tourists are not there, we use them for our protection activity. For example, any forest fire comes, with a handful of watchers, handful of foresters, we may not able to uh, uh, what you call uh, subside the forest fire. We use them. We use this naturalist who you 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 use just trackers, which will help them in uh, in the what you call let, uh, letting off. I mean, uh, just subsiding the forest fire. By subsiding the forest fire, we are helping in conservation again. So I would say that a series of the activities, series of statistics, has shown that participatory uh, the management has helped only. Now it is uh, it is only given a positive trajectory in the conservation. that's great sir any any more questions please uh, either mute unmute and ask or you can put it in the chat box uh, okay so i have one question so i used to go to karnataka for us so there like the tourism infrastructure is much more and then they are making lot of revenue i think so that kind of a plan may not be there in kerala our place or like in kabini or uh, bandipur they have a uh, huge bungalows and uh, like 10000 rupees per day uh, stays so that kind of monetization is not planned here anywhere Sir, you are mute. Not able to hear you, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, you are mute. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, now, now, now I can hear. No, no, I don't want to compare any state as such in point of view, but uh, the uh, but I would rather say that Kerala model is something highly benefit sharing model. Uh, whatever whatever amount or money or revenue we are generating it is substantially flow back for the uh, the livelihood uh, of the local people, development of the local uh, local uh, um, local uh, people in terms of their whatever uh, improving their social economic. Uh, Livings, and uh, we also uh, support in terms of uh, the conservation activities. Protect, uh, but suppose the normal budget, for example, may not able to give sufficient money for our make camp food. Sometimes may not be give fund for our uh, what do you call camp kits. So this fund is this money will become very handy for give uh, buying some camp kits, camp food, etc. So which will help in protection also. So the benefit sharing uh, in uh, in uh, in Kerala perspective, it is more uh, I would say that more um, uh, democratic. Uh, the the more um, uh, the people are. I mean this year uh, we have we, we, the institutional mechanism very strong. The equal development committees that people only be there. That we have again higher level. That forest development agencies there. We have Peria Foundation. We have governing body where minister itself is there. So the the uh, the decision making is more uh, more democratic and more uh, judicious and in a in a highly benefit sharing mode. And uh, I don't want to comment upon what exactly other states are doing, but uh, yes, we I totally agree that uh, the the amount should be flowed back to the community, both flowed back to the cause of conservation and uh, and protection. That's what I, I I totally believe in that. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, there was one question about the green passport. Uh, what is green passport? How can we get? Uh, can you explain a bit about that? Actually, the green passport concept has been uh, uh, taken out of context. It has been uh, the unfortunate part is that uh, I only was the uh, I mean started that that particular green passport with a different different objective. But it has taken a different uh, tune or tone altogether. The idea was uh, my uh, the idea was the green passport. How I initiated was that uh, it is something like that we'll give to a, a student or somebody. Uh, it, they, they'll carry like a normal passport uh, type of thing. No? Wherever you enter in a different countries, you'll stamp the uh, the country stamp in there. No? Welcome to Dubai. Welcome to US. Look at the Japan. We have something like 25 plus uh, PA in the in the state, or, or I mean, like uh, we have uh, Pepara Century, Chimney Century, Nayar, Parambiklam, Peria, Silent Valley. So it is something like a nice souvenir. As a, as a as a when I was a student, no, I was very much actively involved in nature clubs. As a, I was very much loving it. Something I I would like to go to every park. I would to be I, and I want to carry some memory of that park. So that was the idea when I was in my college days. No, I used to work very actively for nature club. So that was the idea that so this particular passport will be uh, will be uh, uh, any I mean you can buy for some 10 20 rupees not an issue but we will be giving the uh, different uh, uh, stamps uh, will be there for the uh, park whenever enter, when we when, whenever you enter into the park the park authority will give a stamp to the person in the particular passport or small book in there. That was the idea, but unfortunately, it was blown out of the whole the concept, and it has been uh, thought that anybody holding that particular passport, it is something that some privilege has been given to them. They can enter with that passport, enter into the anywhere, anywhere in the forest or, or this particular forest. So the concept was not clicked in that way. It has been, uh, I would say that uh, it is, uh, it is unfortunately, it is not implemented and finally stopped. So that 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 was. Uh, that was the thing. Okay, mm. so that thanks for explanation. I just uh, yeah. heard that there is something green passport, and now they like, understood what it was. Okay, thanks, sir. I'll just add to that. I have seen in seventies, you know, while working in Periyar, and uh, that some people will come and say that uh, they will argue with the uh, the guard, forest guard at the boat landing, saying that I am a member of WWF, and how can you say that I cannot go without <laughs> paying money? So. Likewise, you know, everybody feels that being a member in some conservation organization and having a passport, which he said, you know, it's a souvenir or it's a sort of uh, to be proud of. Maybe at the old age, you know, you can just lean back, and, lean back and say that I have been to such and such places. That's a sort of passport. So I think, you know, 
unfortunately people defeated it i would say <laughs> when some of our people are only defeated yeah, yeah, our people only it is a good book it is a good book and i think it was initiated by sanjay uh, but unfortunately even the officials some of the officials also didn't understand the very purpose yeah, yeah. They, they, they i think uh, sanjay is also a good photographer sanjay is also a good photographer i don't know how how far he can do yeah, it I, now I, because I, of I, the decision i love photography i love photography yes I, 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 Oh, the majority of photographers no i, I love i'm really happy to see because i i see a, our i mean the future ambassadors in you the conservation ambassadors in you so uh, it's uh, you are our future no so we i want i mean it, we are to we are, lots of responsibility rest on you all uh, important that uh, important target group of conservation are uh, to take this conservation uh, challenges Uh, ahead, and uh, we need your support. We need your active uh, type of involvement. We should be more responsible. You know, I, nowadays I'm mean, carrying a what you call a five lakh gun. Uh, it's not gun in the sense that uh, I mean Canon gun or uh, the what is that? The camera. It's not a big deal. I mean, uh, I mean any IT professional who get lots of money. and uh, and they come in the third one they come with a the camera they say that i am a photographer uh, it, it, it won't make any sense for me the, one should be sensible enough one should be uh, sensitized enough what is your responsibility of a uh, i mean uh, of a photographer you are actually uh, what do you call like, uh, capturing the moments of uh, those those species or those wildlife those those forest and which which actually uh, your responsibility is that that particular uh, we should spread the message of conservation to a, a different larger uh, uh, what do you call target groups in the society i uh, spread the message of conservation the what you have captured it should be conserved in posterity and you will act as a very important uh, uh, tar, what do you call uh, target group uh, not target group uh, important ambassadors of conservation to take carry forward the baton of conservation you are our extended arms of conservation so that responsibility you should all have that's what i i request all of you to take that uh, and uh, very seriously and and you have i mean large responsibility to play and i have a very high respect for uh, the young uh, sensitive uh, sensible photographers like you yes, so so yeah one of the uh, one of our aim also goal also that like uh, uh, say uh, promote the ethical photography whether it's inside the protected area or outside the protected area any type of wildlife ph photography should be like should have should be ethical so promoting that is our one of our aim to as photographers the green pixel the whatsapp group of the photographers of wonderful photos and surprisingly none of them have deviated from the main objective of photography sharing and you know discussing about it that's normally in any whatsapp group they go for political thoughts and you know some troll and other things but this is superbly managed by the administrator i i think you know they need a, a congratulation for that uh and uh, i think uh, 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 sanjayan was the person who has been promoting a lot of photographers while in parambukalam i don't know how far you could do that in periyar because the access is a problem uh, but that was superb and a lot of people have uh, i have heard them talking high about his contributions thank you sanjayan very very good very good presentation okay and there was one question one more question one more question that's like yeah, how okay. can we participate uh, in conservation and related activities in this covid scenario how can we contribute if not directly traveling to the reserves and indirectly empowering empowering the people uh, actually uh, if you if you see uh, the what you call the last 2 3 years uh, of kerala's uh, three major disaster we had seen one is the the 2018 flood and again again followed uh, then what i mean i mean we have uh, the humans have very short memory no and uh, we uh, so what i mean we comfortably forget it so fortunately i would i would say that it's not a, i mean i should not say like that and uh, it is a recurrent flood in 2019 came so 2019 came as, uh, so it becomes that flood becomes uh, i mean it become is it be recurrent the flood is not a once in a 100 years now it is something like that there is a huge uh, what you call uh, land use um, uh, what you call uh, uh, unscientific land use planning issue was there what we, many people were raising what all the uh, unscientific development was there 
So the 2018 flood, 2019 recurrent floods, and followed by the COVID issues. The, if you see, if you, if you track back the COVID and the post-COVID things, no? So, I mean, earlier, uh, we used to say that, uh, I mean, this much number of uh, traffic should not be there. Uh, uh, this caused lots of pollutions. Who, who, who listens? Who listens? But the naturally COVID had brought that particular thing into that natural control has come. Now, uh, another very important thing is that uh, I don't want that to go very religious manner or uh, don't take it another very, uh, what they call, offensive or anything and plus don't take any politically. And we used to have always tell that the Shabrimala, no? Shabrimala, I mean, uh, the, the, what they call the, the vehicle should not park at Pamba and you should park at Tilakal. It was never happened. But what happened? Uh, the flood has uh, turned to be a natural type of uh, thing that it is not stopped there. So, and I mean, uh, so what I'm telling is that uh, the nature is taking the course, which is nature of course, to teach us, teach us that all these natural disasters are because of human made uh, issues, human made unscientific developments, the unscientific uh, land use planning, especially you can see you know, along the roads, you can see that the vertical cut of the, the soils or mountains or the you know, hills. It is totally, and we know that is unscientific. Nobody was, uh, nobody was uh, dare to tell all those things. But yes, now nature is taking course and yes, is educating us and telling us, yes, if you if you not do properly to the nature, nature will be uh, retracting on us. Now, now there here is a very important role to play you all, and uh, all those, uh, all those, uh, the good lessons of all or disaster or what is this thing, you can a very well teach or it will very well connect to the to the community easily and through your photography through your uh, what you call uh, you can uh, capture some of the good things either through photography you can able to uh, educate them or by your own efforts you can a small small way you can connect to this uh, the society to ensure that a bridge of uh, our conservation requirement the uh, the, 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 the sense of owning this of our conservation or protection of forests, protecting them, uh, our water resources and uh, uh, unscientific development we should have to stop uh, land use planning and also to the organic farming. Uh, if, uh, all those things are very, very vital. You now people have started slowly started cultivating the, uh, what you call the uh, uh, organic farming or farming in the backyard. Now people feel very comfortable, which is some sort of an ex learning which we are getting so all those things, COVID, uh, post-COVID scenarios, we can be a good opportunity for all of us to carry forward the message of sustainable living, how you live in balance with the nature, how you conserve our forests, how you conserve our natural resources, how we how, how ensure our water security, how we ensure our air security for us and for our future. Mm, sir, uh, excellent talk, sir. Uh, so one of the success mm -hmm. story of the eco development project in Periyar and Parabikulam that you have mentioned is because of the balance uh, uh, between the conservation of society as well as the uh, livelihood of uh, people living in and around it. Sir, I would like to ask, uh, is there any other places where such uh, uh, eco uh, tourism mm -hmm. development has been taken place in uh, Kerala? Yeah, we have the, uh, some, uh, some of the places we have initiated. Like Muna uh, in Arvitlam, uh, Muna Wildlife uh, Division, uh, we had some st success stories are there. Muna Wildlife Division. We had uh, then, uh, some sort of uh, initiatives in uh, Pekpara and uh, Shenduni. Shenduni also, we had done some good, good initiatives. We had done some good initiatives in Wal uh, Warishal area. We did uh, some, some good initiatives in Warishal. Uh, so, some, some initiatives in uh, uh, I think in Pony, Pony area, we have done some good okay, initiatives. Pony. So I think uh, we have fairly done a very good, uh, uh, good initiatives in uh, across Kerala. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, many... would... Yeah, go ahead, Raju. Uh, yeah, Mr. So Raju. Many of the public uh, private uh, partnerships. Uh, see, sir. So many of these are under public and private uh, partnership, isn't it? No, as such, no, Hello? I don't think so. private partnership. Many, many, sir, many of these initiatives are under public private uh, partnership. As of now, um, ninety nine percent is uh, public uh, funded only, public uh, money only, not okay. private funded. 
and uh, the okay uh, the, the, uh, the what is called the money generally we flow uh, from the eco tourism gate fees no? whatever gate fees is the entry fees okay. is that primarily or maybe some of the eco shops we are having and we sell the honey and all those things, forest products that money directly comes but now the concept of private partnership is coming very high especially the okay. forest conservation is coming very high and the, the kind of requirement uh, the, the conservation required a huge requirement also so it is not that uh, is uh, only a small component of eco development of the people are conservation is a huge challenge uh, as a goal i mean for example a small mangrove private mangrove land is there okay now uh, government may not able to sometimes purchase it immediately i mean if the private uh, firms come up why can't they procure us some 20 cents of mangrove and they conserve it either value in the department or rent it by whatever so it is a big and very big thing big thing now uh, some of the places where the where highways are coming up uh, all holidays there the corridors are already broken uh, we can do some overhead for the underground corridors where the private partnership make a big role to play or okay that is big money that is more money uh, i mean uh, all the guides are there we support the guides in capacity building training them we will do some kits for that you are all i mean if in terms of cameras small cameras can be given photography they can take so i mean again they again is a small way of supporting the uh, through a private partnership so i think that the private partnership has to play a very vital role in in coming as in conservation as of now the private partnership and conservation is very less in i am talking about the department of run uh, uh, program but i know that there are uh, many ngos are there who are working primarily through the, the private fundings uh, wti wwr all those things are there wcp then finally works on csr funding and there are different projects also okay sir. thank you sir sir uh, one question so this uh, uh, mudumalai tiger reserve and uh, bandipur tiger reserve and then uh, uh, the the nagar hole everything the and and all these are contiguous to the vinad right vinad but that's still a sanctuary right it's not a tiger reserve like parambikulam or uh, peria so uh, is is that a political or it's like a, some other reason and technical reason it's not the ask very very sensitive question <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway uh, 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 no it's a Okay. I always get this question, so that's why I asked. <laughs> no, actually, it's a, uh, yeah, I mean, it is uh, time is not ripened enough to to uh, to get me into. So hopefully, it is uh, in the in the law. Our one of our important uh, our future plan. Let's hope, God willing, it will be Tiger Reserve soon. I think I don't have any inhibition to say that. Okay, <laughs> so to comment on that. Uh, there was a, a proposal sort of thing, you know, especially Project Tiger wanted to include uh, why not as a buffer, at least as a buffer for uh, uh, other places, because, you know, why not has several settlements and other things. So, but unfortunately, the, the media and also there had been several rumors spread saying that you had to paint your house with the green paint. Uh, paint it green and you cannot sell your property and you know you cannot uh, walk through through the road at night and you cannot have light at night so they didn't know exactly what is a buffer of a tiger reserve uh, i had the opportunity to interact with the people's representatives along with the forest higher forest officials and uh, the dfos there and uh, when we briefed them what exactly is a buffer and what is the advantage like this eco development programs you know which uh, sanjayan had been implementing in periyar and uh, parambikulam uh, so when i when we briefed them the whole thing they were uh, surprisingly asking me now what to do we want to we want to have the buffer at least you know, for the tiger i said you erase whatever you have been uh, talking about and then we can think of but then it it is there problems are there so everywhere now just see eco sensitivity zone when the forest department uh, proposed eco sensitivity zone uh, uh, what uh, newspaper say a buffer uh, and you know it has gone to the government of india and it is there as a draft uh, so that people can comment uh, before finalizing it and then they say they have started agitating and this this proposal must be definitely it is uh, maybe 200 meter or 300 meter 500 meter depending on the area and size of the protected area uh, sanctuaries and national parks but they didn't know that they don't know that 
as it stands now, it is 10 kilometer because wherever there is no eco since it is undeclared, Supreme Court said it will be deemed to be 10 kilometer. So they don't know that. And after all, what is that eco since it is on? It is not going to affect the normal life of the people. Only quarrying and uh, such uh, uh, activities will not be permitted. That's all. And you cannot have a chemical factory. That's uh, that's there. And I don't think anybody will, would love to have a chemical factory near your house. So just this is uh, sp spreading rumors. And somebody asked me uh, what to do now because we have spent a lot of time preparing this proposal to send it to government of India. I said, you know, you ask the priest you know, to prepare the... Uh, uh, prepare the uh, buffer zone and then just forward it. I mean, you cannot leave it to the people like that. You have to educate the people and at the same time, that is where I think maybe as uh, Sanjan was telling, you know, all of you uh, should interfere and then start talking about it and convincing the people what is the advantage of having it and what is the requirement of having it. Yes, sir, I understand. Then, uh, Total number of tigers in Kerala is something 140 something. Out of that, uh, area tiger reserve is around uh, some 40, 40 45. Uh, Paramikla will be some 30. If you put together all together, this is 70 only. But in Vainad uh, wildlife sanctuary, it is more than what area tigers and Paramikla put together. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay. Rubai, can you let us ah, Alibai, come on. Ask question. Hello, hello. Any picture of the children of the picture? Any picture of the picture? Basically, like, why not? One, one of the big problems like, we have seen is like now the, the roads are closed. Uh, and now what happens is like all these lorries, everyone go and stop inside the uh, the the our area right like the the um why not sanctuary right because like they cannot enter into the uh the Muduma, so enter into the bandipur so everyone passed inside the uh the forest road right so so at least that cannot be stopped because like uh, because I... Well, uh, actually, there, so there, there are there are yeah, there are uh, certain things you know, I may not able to uh, uh, substantiate it because of certain uh, certain uh, policy. Being an officer, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. why I, I will my comments on that. Okay, fine. No, but no, it's that, no, but, are uh, some uh, of the things like. Uh, uh, but Dhruv, I, I think it is Dhruv, you know, who is asking this question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, I think uh, currently there is no such parking or anything happening because now people are used to that and they know that uh, you cannot go and park there or you cannot cross the uh, uh, the cross Kerala border to Karnataka after a particular time. So currently it is better. Earlier it was a problem. Uh, nowadays I think the you know, forest department has also taken the steps you know, to see that they are not parking in such places and at least they don't go for lighting fire to avoid of animals and other things i think it it is comparatively better now okay cool. sure sir i didn't see it recently yeah uh any other question uh, uh, hello sir uh, uh, hello sir i am an audible team yes go ahead yes uh, I'm working on the Yeah, I think uh, 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 Hello? Subash, Subash. Yeah, please, please. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, for, most, for most of the zoonotic diseases were transmitted from wildlife. Example, the Nipah, Ebola, and also the Corona. And uh, my question is, is how long uh, these forest officials, like uh, uh, veterinary surgeons and forest guards, are vulnerable to these kind of situations while handling the wildlife? Actually, uh, so, uh, sorry, Sikosh, I couldn't uh, hear it properly. Can you uh, please? Sir, I, I, I can type it. Come on, section number one. Sir, I, I couldn't hear. Please. Sir, I can type it. I can read that. Most of the zoonotic diseases were transmitted from wildlife, etc. Nipah, Nebo. Ebola, new corona. How now long corona. the forest officials uh, uh, like 
veterinary surgeon guards etc are vulnerable to this kind of situation while handling the wildlife fauna globally the wildlife trade should be banned very strictly with appropriate policies in future then i think like the first one is the question how much uh, uh, how how much like the the wildlife officials are threatened with uh, the wildlife this zoonotic disease yeah that is the first question oh, it's a very very, uh, very vital question uh, very important issue and uh, it is very challenging for our, you know, being a forest officials we we at end of the day we are also humans no? it is equally equally been vulnerable for like anybody like you so when handling this issues uh, i mean uh, it's really risky also i, I, I mean you yeah, forget about go not again normal day to day rescue operation we feel not, i mean uh, we have we have problem for example uh, uh, some uh, law came back there is the issue of a, a pack of wild dogs no four four five dogs in tengal got rabies and they, they, they all, all all the four dogs come out all on different one time they start uh, what they call going here and there they, and we are, we are we are trying to and they doing the process uh, my class got bitten by them and bitten by them again uh, is there like again we have to take to the hospital and do all those things no so when it's a very uh, uh, forest officials are facing a very uphill uh, task in uh, in handling this thing many at times the zoonotic uh, the contagious disease is very very dangerous we should be very very careful and as i told uh, is uh, the the our international trade should be more stringent and more uh, more stricter stricter type of uh, embargo should come for such uh, trading of uh, wild 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 species of uh, animals Uh, this is the country. This is the country or outside the country. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much for answering. As I am also preparing for IFS, <laughs> and uh, if yes. I get the opportunity to make uh, in course of conversation with you, thank you, sir. Yes, very very nice to hear, uh, Subhash. And uh, please do that. It's a it's a very very it's a premium service and wonderful service, and. Um, Um, you 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 are you are you, you, you getting the opportunity to to serve uh, to serve the nature and uh, most importantly to to the those species you know, those wildlife and uh, which uh, they, I mean, their voice is generally not uh, listened uh, by the general public you know? and we we are the people to, uh, to take care of their voices for so, uh, for those people we are going to those wildlife those nimble creatures we are such, such a human service we are doing. and uh, it's a wonderful service and uh, i i i i i wish you all the best and uh, we hope you'll be in the service too ah uh, yeah sir thank you sir uh, sir uh, basically i'm more interested in studying the habitat of uh, animals and their uh, behavior their conservation and uh, in fact i have also more pets so that i'm interested in joining for or veterinary any of this my background is uh, geology sir I I couldn't hear your question, please. Can you repeat? Ah, uh, uh, sorry, it's not a question. Ah, uh, it's my uh, it's my opinion. I I am interested in more uh, studying the behavior of the animal, their animals, habitat, yeah, right? and their conservation, so that I am uh, aiming for I F S. Basically, your interest is conservation biology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For by uh, studying their behavior and uh, what so, role those. This is a very very interesting thing. Uh, it's a very one wonderful uh, the, 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 every day you learn you learn, and uh, you the, the, i mean you you are unearthing lots of mysteries of nature very it's it's a it's uh, yeah, a it's a field uh, yes sir unfortunately i ended up with a geology background <laughs> so that uh, by i have and i am thirichu arnjathu ende vadi ifs ennaanu so enik adhe onnu geology nu maaran pattu അത് നമ്മളുള്ള താല്പര്യം ജൂലോജിയോ ബോട്ടനിയോ ഹിസ്റ്ററിയോ ഒന്നും അല്ല നമ്മളെ നമ്മളെ താല്പര്യം ഒരു ഒരു പാഷൻ മാറ്റർ ഉള്ളത് ഇപ്പോ നമ്മളെ നമ്മളെ ഈ ഇഫ് യു സീ ദ ദി ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഓഫ് ദി കൊളോണിയൽ കൺസർവേഷൻ ഇൻ ഇന്ത്യ ഓർ എക്സ്പ്രസ് വേൾഡ് ഈ ഏറ്റവും നല്ല റിസർച്ചും വർക്കും ചെയ്തത് എന്ന എഞ്ചിനീയർസും നൺ ബയോളജിക്കൽ ആൾക്കാർ അപ്പോ അപ്പോ അതിന്റെ നമുക്ക് ആ ഒരു സബ്ജക്ട് 
ജിയോളജി ജിയോഗ്രഫിയും കൂടിയുള്ള ഒരു കണക്ഷൻ അത് വളരെ രസകരമായിരിക്കും ഫോർ ബയോളജി ഇഫ് യു ആർ ലുക്കിംഗ് അറ്റ് ദ ജിയോഗ്രഫിക്കൽ ഡിസ്ട്രിബ്യൂഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് യു ക്യാൻ ബ്രിങ് ഇൻ ദ ജിയോളജി കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ഓൾസോ ഐ തിങ്ക് ദാറ്റ് വിൽ ബി സൂപ്പർ ജിയോഗ്രഫി <laughs> സൈഡ് <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay so thank you sir <laughs> nice nice super sir all the best super uh, thank you sir i will try my best you know you are you are having my email id there uh, sanjay kumar ifs at gmail dot com anything is there please do share i am more than happy to uh, to share my uh, in, inputs on on that whatever uh, uh, okay sir okay i will mail okay. i will mail okay. any any more question or question uh, sir i would like to ask something uh, like it's in a larger context uh, about the fragmentation of the forest uh, like uh, how it affects the wildlife movement uh, for example particularly looking upon this uh, shendurni wildlife sanctuary this uh, shengote gap is uh, restricting the wildlife movement right uh, so what will be the take on that well uh, well uh, all this issue all this issue i was mentioning earlier earlier, earlier the, the development of pressures or unscientific development or unscientific land use planning and the the population pressure whatever is there uh, everything is been uh, actually uh, falling back to what your very important point you raised right. 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 and uh, our vital corridor is been broken and uh, in the, uh, and that is our major major uh, challenge ahead and uh, the what we told is the shengota gap is very very um, very important in the sense that the periyar landscape you know we want some sort of 3 to 4000 square kilometer agatyavanam landscape around 3 to 4000 square kilometer it is both has been disconnected by this particular shengota gap now uh, yes lot of work has been done by certain organizations like feral and team we had to come to some some sort of a uh, recommendation that we have two three uh, linkage uh, small small areas uh, where these corridors can be connected and uh, that is called one is mfl corridor second is uh, nagamela corridor and third is kota vasal corridor There's three corridors are there in this particular area and this uh, corridor spans from as from uh, from uh, 50 meter to say 700 meter so we need uh, some places we need uh, overhead parcels some places we need under parcels also so since uh, this places uh, uh, for we alex had a brain stuff i am very much serious and sincere in this particular aspect so we ensure uh, these two corridor agastavan landscape and material landscape is connected and uh, i can i can only guarantee you that uh, before i retire from the uh, in the service for 2036 is my time of retirement It, it, it will be 100% this two this two landscape will be connected that is one of the top priority of my one of my life to edge for that and uh, yes we have started working on that god willing everything will be coming out at least uh, the new phase should be happen yesterday i was reading the newspaper uh, that uh, the uh, express highway from pune uh, pune to delhi or something and uh, it will have a uh, compulsory we will have five a minimum five uh, overhead and underhead parcels uh, at the part of the highway development project and, uh, and the project itself has started imbibing the what is called the dpr itself has started imbibing the concept of under underwood parcel highway and that uh, overhead parcel for the animal to pass through so at least at uh, at the policy level there is a change already started at, um, so i am very sure the coming days all the the linear project in the development project like railways or highways or roads it should have invariably the component of the, the under pass of the overhead passes of tunnel whatever is it animal uh, animal passage should should not be affected so that will be uh, coming up soon and it's a very very vital point what you have raised it's a very important point and uh, doesn't mean that we should have 
big type of uh, underwent overhead passes. A small green green uh, passages like what we have done in uh, China. Now we for for the Brazil giant squirrel from those parts to uh, the small uh, what do you call uh, the pine nose type of small uh, uh, bamboo type of things there across the the roads they had uh, they had planted. I mean they erected and some green. Green plant has been, I uh, mean, some climbers have been uh, raised through. You know, a grizzled giant squirrel is passing through. And uh, same thing, some experiments done by, uh, I think, in uh, yeah, for somebody uh, in Valpare for such passage for the line till Mecca in Valpare. So, you know, this type of green passages uh, across the, the highways and corridors are very, very important. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. And I would like to ask one more thing about the skybirds. I have uh, recently read an article like uh, in uh, Tenmala, uh, they are using this uh, skybird for the movement of this arboreal mammals, right? So will that be 100% uh, uh, useful for, I mean, for the movement of this wildlife? No, actually all the skybirds are only for the to the 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 the, uh, the already corridor is broken, so in this type of small small connectivity help in. Uh, uh, I mean, animals actually look forward for some undisturbed undisturbed area, undisturbed features or, or uh, to pass through. They also don't really don't want to come to the river otherwise also. So if some some sort of a facility some facilitation is given, animals instinct is that they they will use it, uh, and uh, and that's what I am I am very sure that. Animals start and start using it. Only thing is that what a feature we create, it should be actually near to the nature. I mean, uh, I mean, if you create a small, uh, I mean, uh, concrete uh, bridges, sometimes animal may also hesitate to power, you know, not to go through. At the same time, if this, that particular bridges will be blended with some some soil substrate, some plants will be raised, some trees, greenery will be around. And it will look like the natural, the natural of the one side will uh, be connected to the another, another uh, side. So it will attract animals to naturally pass through. So that's what uh, we have to do. How we can able to blend the, the this particular um, express, uh, sorry, the sky bridges or the high um, underpasses, overhead passes naturally. Thank you, sir. Okay, right. uh, any more questions? Otherwise, like we can uh, end up because it's almost two hours. We take we took first time, this is first time. <laughs> okay, so uh, anything else? Otherwise, uh, uh, I'm just there. Or? Yeah, what's that? Uh, yes, uh, Drew, I sorry, I was on mute actually. Okay, yeah. Yeah, can we... Uh, Mr. Bijila, uh, uh, Prem Kumar, huh? Who, who's on online, Dhru. please? Prekal Prem Kumar. Yeah, yeah, please tell me, please tell me. Uh, no, I know I'm just was talking like so I thought like we can end like if there are no more questions because it's already <laughs> two hours. Ali <right? laughs> <laughs> Ali, 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 Ali,